Now I'm going to say something controversial. Your next family car doesn't have to be an SUV. Your next family car doesn't have to be an SUV. There are some great wagons out there, especially from Europe. And one of the best is this, the Peugeot 308. I'm Alex Dalrymple, welcome to Four Wheels and a Seat, the channel where every week I review a brand new car. To make sure you don't miss one, hit the subscribe button down below, the notification bell, and if you like what you see, you can give me a like as well, please. The latest 308 arrived on our shores at the end of last year, and it's a bit of a looker, although you don't see many of them on the road, and I think that's because, well, a lot of people don't know that it's out there. And you know what? I'm gonna help rectify that right now. The 308 shares the same design language as some of Peugeot's latest SUVs. So we've got this new front end that looks really, really good with long LED driving lights that do double duty as turn indicators. We've got this really cool looking front grille that's actually been mimicked by some other car makers. Um, looking at you, MG and Havel. And this is also the first Peugeot to feature the all new Peugeot badge. This car has been painted in what Peugeot call Avatar Blue, although to me it looks a bit more like a Dances with Wolves green. But it's a very attractive, sleek design, and I really like what they've done here on the front fender with this line here that kind of pulls back the front headlights, and that's followed through right to the rear here where there's a similar effect on the rear light clusters. There's only one spec of the 308 wagon available in Australia, and that is this, the GT Premium, and it comes with some very nice 18-inch black shiny alloys here that look really good too. Roof rails up on top and a sunroof as well. The rear of the 308 looks really good as well. The only thing I don't love about it are the fake exhausts down the bottom there. The real exhaust is hidden well underneath the bumper bar where you're never gonna see it. There's a slight sort of whiff of Hyundai Kona about this design, but I mean, look, it looks much better than that. And the rear light clusters here are just awesome. They actually turn on in sequence as you approach the car at night to welcome you back to your vehicle. But this car's best party trick is underneath the powered tailgate here, and that is a massive, 608 litre storage space. And I mean, that is huge for a small wagon. In fact, it's big even for a medium sized wagon. Put down the rear seats, you can add an extra thousand litres or so to that total. And the middle seat acts as a rear pass through as well for long items like beach cabanas. And there's additional storage space also underneath the removable panel here on the floor. No spare tyre, but you do get a tyre repair kit. And I can tell you this car had more than enough room for my family of four's annual summer road trip to the beach this year. But the surprises don't end there with the 308 because before I picked up this car, I didn't actually check out its specs at all. So I got in it, drove a couple of hundred Ks, thought, oh, maybe it's a 1.5 or a 1.8. Looked it up and I was surprised to find out that it's only a 1.2 litre three cylinder turbo engine that outputs 96 kilowatts of power and 230 newton metres of torque. And believe me, I know those numbers don't sound massive, but when you're driving it, it does feel like a lot more. It's a really good engine. Fuel economy is really good too, averaging at 5.3 litres per 100 k's on a combined cycle. And it just gets better on the inside too, with the 308 featuring an all new interior with a slightly quirky French design that looks and feels fantastic. The materials in the cabin, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. We've got some hard plastic up on top here, but we do have some softer stuff with some stitching in it on top. A nice sort of band of Alcantara through the middle there, which extends onto the doors with uh, more soft touch as we move down a little bit and gets a little bit hard and plasticky here in the center console. But uh, there's a nice sort of contrast of colors there. And all up, it is a very pleasant cabin to be in. Up the top, we've got a 10 inch wide touch screen that's built into the dash and looks really good. It uh, uses some of the most unique software I've seen in a car. It's quite different to anything else I've used, but it works really, really well. It's actually very intuitive. If you get stuck and don't know how to do something, there are video tutorials to guide you through and um, there's animated transitions. So when you switch in between apps, a cool graphic slides across the screen and it looks really good. The native navigation powered by TomTom is one of the best you're going to find. It's up there with Google and Apple in terms of ease of use and the amount of detail shown. There's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although pairing your phone for the first time can be a little bit of a painful experience, but I got there in the end. For reasons best known only to Mr. and Mrs. Peugeot though, the GT Wagon only has a six speaker sound system as opposed to the Hatchback's 10. It sounds 
adequate. Paired with the top screen is a smaller lower touch screen which act as shortcuts for the main screen and you can actually customize these to whatever you want them to be which is a really handy feature. Some physical shortcut buttons just underneath that mostly for the climate control and the volume for the sound system. We've got a couple of storage shelves underneath that. The top one is wireless charging for your phone although uh, it can be a little fiddly just to get your phone to sit on there properly and it does tend to slide around a little bit when you're going around corners which is a bit annoying. The lower one is a good spot to maybe keep your wallet perhaps. There's a USB-C input there, a 12 volt outlet underneath the sliding cubby here. We've got a couple of cup holders which are a good size. The gear shifter is up here on this raised section and it's sort of like a big switch which uh, actually really comes in handy when you're doing a three-point turn because you can just so have your hand resting here and go reverse drive really, really quickly and it just makes it really simple. Park is uh, done by pushing the P button at the top there. Engine stop start just above that and we've got the drive mode selector and the electronic park brake. I like the design of the digital instrument cluster. I just don't like where it's positioned. It's really high above the steering wheel so your view of it is always partially obscured by the wheel, especially if you have your hand resting up on top here. In terms of what it does, well, it's fully digital and completely customizable. Indeed, you can choose what widgets you want to display up there. There's a few preset display modes which you can scroll between by pushing the button here on the indicator stalk. And overall, I think the design actually looks really good. There is apparently a 3D function, which I've seen in some other Peugeot SUVs, but in this car, it doesn't seem to be on, or if it's been turned off, I cannot figure out how to turn it back on. So I'm not quite sure what's going there, but I can tell you the 3D look does look pretty cool when it works. The steering wheel, I love though. It's small and has a flat top and a flat bottom, which feels great to throw around in corners and when you're parking. Uh, controls here for the sound system and adaptive cruise control, a big center piece here with the horn and the new Peugeot badge and a big GT badge at the bottom of it here. I really like the feel of this wheel, has a great sporty feel to it. Metal pedals down the bottom there. The seats are Nappa leather, full electric adjustment for the driver, less so for the front passenger. Both the driver and front passenger get uh, seat massage with a few different preset programs from the center console screen and the seats are heated as well. Great lumbar support too, which is great on a long road trip. Seating position, really good in the cabin. Perfect view out the front there, almost to the front of the bonnet. Good view uh, through the rear vision mirror through the back window, although it is a bit high up, so you will be relying on the cameras a little bit, which is fine because the view of the cameras through the center console screen is razor sharp. And the rear of the 308 which is perfect for kids on a family road trip. I can tell you my two have been very happy in the back here because the seats are comfortable with that nice Nappa leather. They've got two USB-C ports to keep themselves entertained on a road trip with their devices, which is great for my wife and I, so we can listen to podcasts at the front. Uh, in terms of uh, backseat comfort for adults though, well, it's a little bit squashy um, and it's not really helped by the hard plastic shell on the rear of the driver's seat here. I'm 190 centimeters tall and I'm behind my own seating position and my knees are touching the seat in front, but it's not too bad. Not a lot of toe room though, and headroom is actually pretty good. We've got a couple of extra LED lights up here for some additional lighting. More of this nice Alcantara here on the door inserts cup holders in the door as well. No uh, center armrest for rear seat passengers, unfortunately, although this does drop down as a pass through for long objects. Um, so look all up, it's actually pretty comfortable back here. Well, driving around in the rain in some very potholed roads at the moment, the 308 actually feels really, really smooth and comfortable. It just sort of glides over all but the deepest potholes. The only time that I've actually really noticed that it comes a little unstuck is just when you're traveling at speed on the highway and if you hit a bump on the road, the front end can just, you know, get a little upset perhaps. But other than that, it's actually really good. We have three drive modes, normal, eco and sport. And in a cool little feature, they actually change the color of the interior lighting and of all the uh, colors on the center console and digital instrument cluster as well. So when you put it into sport, everything goes a kind of cool shade of red. Now look, there's not really a massive difference in these drive modes. Normal is where you're gonna be most of the time because eco just kind of puts a dampener on everything. And sport just really hangs onto the gears for a bit longer. 
I really do like this little steering wheel. It um, has such a nice sort of sporty feel to it and going up a twisty road as I am right now, you just have such a nice feeling of being able to throw this car around into the corners and with the flat top and bottom it really does give you something to, uh, to grip onto quite nicely. You hear that three cylinder engine going? It makes such a good noise. I mean, that was what led me to think that this car had a bigger engine than it did because I didn't look up the stats of this car at all before I got in it. I honestly thought it had a bigger engine than the three cylinder 1.2 liter engine it has. And you know what? It's just fine. It works really well. It doesn't feel underpowered at all. Is it worthy of its GT badge? Eh, look, it's sporty. Uh, is it GT level sporty? I'm not really quite sure about that. One feature I have been able to test out being in a regional area this week, which I can't really do in the city, is the automatic high beam. So driving at night along a dark <laughs> it will automatically lower the level of the high beam when there's oncoming traffic or if there is a car in front of you as not to startle the uh, other drivers. And uh, the cool thing about that is that it won't completely switch off high beam. It'll keep it bright at a low level. So that way you can see directly what's in front of you quite brightly, but it, you're not startling the drivers of other cars. And, and that's a really cool feature. Performance in the wet is really good too. The roads are pretty soggy today and I'm not losing any traction or grip. There's no wheel slip. In terms of safety gear, this car pretty much has it all. So we've got lane keep assist, we've got cameras at the front and the back, we've got adaptive cruise control, pedestrian and cyclist detection. Uh, you can see a more extensive list here on the screen right now. It really wants for nothing. You can pick the people who know their Peugeots because this car has turned a few heads I've noticed. Didn't get that. Oh, that's the other function, um, voice control. So if you say, okay, Peugeot, except when you want it to, uh, the car will uh, give you voice commands for whatever you need it to do. At just over $55,000, the Peugeot 308 GT is outstandingly good value. It really is a terrific car, it improves once and for all that a family doesn't need an SUV to move them and their stuff around town. So if you're after a really good car to drive that's a little bit different to everything else out there on the road, this is definitely one you want to check out.